Next up, please welcome our two speakers from Amazon, Vice President Amazon Go, Jonna Perini, and Vice President of Technology, Amazon Go and Amazon Books, Dilip Kumar. They'll be interviewed by technology correspondent at Reuters, Jeffrey Dastin. Hey. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Dastin. I write about Amazon and e-commerce news for Reuters. I'm thrilled to be here with John Aquarini and Dilip Kumar, who are the architects of Amazon Store without checkout lines, Amazon Go. Jonna? Hi, thanks for having us here. Uh, I lead the business side of Amazon Go, including operations, uh, product development and design, construction, and the prepared food and meal kits that we sell in the store. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, I'm Dilip Kumar. It's great to be here. I lead the technology teams behind Amazon Go and our Amazon bookstores. Great. So Amazon Go opened to the public in Seattle in uh, January of this year. So, Jonna, why don't you walk us through how to shop in the store for those who are not familiar? Sure. So it's a compact store that focuses on ready-to-eat grab-and-go food as well as grocery essentials that you may need when your significant other texts you, you know, hey, we're out of milk. Uh, shopping the store is simple. You scan in using our Amazon Go app. After that, the phone is done with its job. You can just put it away. And you shop the store like you would shop any other store take things off the shelf, and we add them to a virtual cart. If you put them back, we take them out of your cart. And when you're done, you just walk out. And it was super important to us uh, to make it feel very natural and not have the we didn't want the customer to have to learn new ways to do things. So that, of course, sounds simple, but uh, <laughs> Dilip, tell us about the complicated technology that's at play behind the scenes. Yeah, so as Jonna said, I mean, we had a very simple problem to solve. People come in, take what they want, and just leave. Um, but there were three challenges that we had, and you know, there were many others, but three main ones. The first one is, how do you do this in a way that makes it effortless, where the technology just recedes into the background, where you're not really fighting it, it's not interruptive, you don't have to scan every item, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go take it somewhere else, there's no stopping or waiting in line. And to do that in a very seamless way is actually a lot harder than it seems. The second one, is we, had, you know, we decided that we wanted to do this using computer vision and machine learning. And to do that, we had to invent many algorithms you know, well beyond state of the art to be able to figure out how to solve this problem, which is very simple, as I said, to describe of who took what. But to be able to solve this problem of who took what in a crowded store, when you have people shopping in close proximity to each other, when you have simultaneous interactions with the shelves, that can get very challenging. And we had a very high accuracy bar, because if our shopping receipts are not correct, the experience would unravel. But your algorithms don't really get that much of a chance if you don't have a very robust software and hardware infrastructure that brings it all together, so that no matter what else might be happening, you could have networking blips somewhere, you could have cameras going out, you still need to be able to function and to be able to generate accurate receipts. That's what makes this hard. Great, but uh, so literally the technology that's working our cameras, right, with uh, algorithms running uh, with them, and then sensors in the shelves, right? Yes, that's correct. Great, so, so why did you choose this technology approach? And uh, for some context, there are other companies, uh, for instance, in China, that are adding RFID chips to products that are scanned when customers leave those stores. So why, why this solution? Yeah, so that's a good question. When in the early days, we tried a lot of different approaches, and we kept coming back to what sets of technologies tend to use and leverage machine learning the most. And most of those answers kept coming back to a combination of computer vision and sensor fusion, much like the technologies that you see in self-driving cars. And so the approach that we chose was to see that how best we could leverage computer vision and bring it to bear to solve this problem of you know, who took what uh, in, a, in a grocery store setting. And, that was the, and from, from an RFID perspective, we didn't want to incur the operational burden of tagging every item. And so we wanted to solve it in a way that was a little more seamless 
mm -hmm. uh, for customers and for us. Great, so could you actually talk a bit more about the hardest technology problems that you had to solve? Oh, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there were many, but I'll distill it to one of the, the, you know, the holy grail of computer vision, and it's, it's a tough computer science problem as well, is to be able to take an arbitrary scene and to be able to interpret it, to know exactly what is happening in a scene. Uh, it is not a fully solved problem. Uh, in our case, the scene is shoppers shopping around and in, everywhere in the store, and us figuring out who took what. To do that, you need to be able to understand all the activities that are happening, and you need to have a much greater understanding of what is current state of the art in understanding and interpreting video. So understanding a scene and inventing the algorithms that go and solve and push the boundaries of computer vision is what we had to solve. And there were like many algorithms that sort of fit that mold. And so now in the store in Seattle, there can be 50 people all shopping at the same time, and the cameras will figure yeah, it I mean, out. Yeah, have, we have crowds of all sizes in the store. Great. It's so, pretty busy. So, so actually, um, and actually one other question, can the cameras distinguish between, you know, a Red Bull that has sugar, a Red Bull that doesn't have sugar, how specific uh, can they get? Again, it's a good question. One, one of the interesting problems that you would see, or if you look at around in a grocery store, there's a lot of items that are visually very similar. Uh, you know, you, the, you use the example of a Red Bull. There's, there's a can of Red Bull and the can of Red Bull, the one with that and the one without sugar, they look very similar to each other. Or you could take two jams, the strawberry jam and the raspberry jam. You know, the very act of you picking up the item occludes the one distinguishing characteristic or it partially occludes the one characteristic that identifies one from the other. So building algorithms that dis like figure out and discern which one is which in a scenario where the store is crowded is what makes this challenging. Hmm. Great, so the store has now been open for a couple months to the public. Um, what interesting things have you seen in terms of customer behavior? You know, uh, one of my favorite things is actually, we thought, well, we want to make this shopping experience as natural as possible. We want the customer to have to learn as little as possible. But entering the store is new. So we have a great team of associates, and we have some who are dedicated to that area of the store to help customers. Uh, what we didn't necessarily expect was how many people would stop at the end on their first trip or two and ask, is it really okay if I just leave? <laughs> or, and I, are you sure it's all right? And our associates would say, sure. We even actually wrote it above the door. <laughs> You're good to go. Thanks for shopping. Um, so that's been fun to see. It tends to wear off after the first or second trip. It becomes more natural. But even I, who go, I go to the store every day, at once in a while, I, I tend to stop as I'm putting things in my handbag and look around because that, beha that behavior is something we've all done our whole lives. Mm -hmm. So watching customers uh, pause and ask, but then see the excitement when they get to just leave has been really fun. Are m most of your customers, would you say, repeat customers? And how regularly do they come to the store? You know, we've been delighted with customer response. And because it is, the store is very geared towards people who are hungry and in a rush. Mm. That's, you know, it it's a lot of grab and go food to eat right now. Obviously, the Just Walk Out technology is, is a convenience play for customers to hopefully give them some valuable time back. So we actually have been delighted to see how many customers come back frequently. And in fact, the ones who work very close, like in the building up above, will run down even just to grab a drink mm -hmm. because it's so fast and easy. Faster than a vending machine. Faster than a vending machine. <laughs> if it, well, <laughs> once you swipe your card and everything, absolutely. <laughs> or, or at least with the vending machine, the, the lays don't get stuck. And yeah. <laughs> um, and in, in terms of the inventory, how quickly does it turn over? Uh, you know, that was one thing that actually surprised me. So we knew that, okay, well, more people could probably come in and out faster. But honestly, we had no idea how much. But our store associates spend the vast majority of their time keeping the shelves stocked, especially because it's a pretty peaky business right now. You know, we have a breakfast, a lunch, a mid-afternoon snack, and a, and a dinner business, and they're all pretty spiky. So keeping those shelves stocked is obviously the most important thing in any store, right, whether it has 
just walk out technology in it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and so also, what is the item that people tend to buy the most? You know, our, um, since day one, the chicken banh mi sandwich has been the number one seller, and it's never lost its top spot. Uh, we've been really surprised with the success of the meal kits. Mm. Um, I think because we are that super easy trip, you know, it's 5.30, you're leaving the office, you don't know what's for dinner. Our meal kits, which uh, make dinner for two in about 30 minutes, have been really popular. Um, Fruit, fresh fruit in the morning is far and away very popular. And the other thing is the local stuff from uh, local Seattle bakeries, mm -hmm. like Essential Bakery or Macrina Bakery. I was surprised by how many sweet tooths <laughs> that we have in our customer base. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what, if anything, have you changed about the store since opening it to the public in January? You know, I think it's probably not that different from a lot of the folks here. You know, for Dilip and I, we had been in online our whole career and used to unlimited shelf space yeah. and things like that. But the thing that probably changed most has been learning about what customers like. Mm -hmm. What are they buying? What are their favorite things? Yeah. And we have this fantastic thing because the app, uh, they can give us feedback directly. So they write in for brands they wish we had or, gosh, we wish you had that sandwich and a half size, or why don't you carry this soda? And when it makes sense, we listen, and uh, they are very good about giving us a constant stream of feedback. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so one of the, like, uh, one of the very interesting examples, and I would have ne we wouldn't have realized this, and this was feedback that came from a customer. We sell, you know, one of the foods that we make is a simple salad, and the salad has, you know, dressing's always on the side, but it has, you know, cheese and it has sunflower seeds and it has dates and mixed greens, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, we got a feedback from a couple of customers who said, you know, we've been hearing great things about it and everybody around us is getting it and eating it and loving it. Uh, but you know, I'm vegan, so why, but the cheese is mixed in, so why don't you put the cheese on the side and now in addition to it becoming a vegetarian, it's a vegan. You know, offering as well, which is great. And now it's a, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's in the store as a, as a vegan. So, so retailing is harder than the technology, essentially. <laughs> it's like, you know, customers are very passionate about food. They should be. Yeah, so, yeah. We're probably the opposite of a lot of folks <laughs> here because the the physical retail part is is new for us. Yeah. So, so actually, for the folks in the audience who might invest in their own technology or even an off-the-shelf solution that some startups are offering, you know, what what you recommend to them, and to the extent you can speak about this, I mean, how do the economics of a store like this work compared to a regular convenience store? Well, I think it goes without saying that y you have to establish a sustainable business model. And I think as, as a few of the people who've already spoken have said, what it really comes down to is, who's your customer? What can you do that adds value to their life? And what are you uniquely position to offer them. And if you're not uniquely positioned to offer it to them, are you willing to build it or buy it or, or find some other route? And I think what we've already heard from several people, and I, th I think for sure what Dilip and I would say is, start with the customer and work backwards from there, which is the Amazon approach. Um, some of you may have read, we actually write a press release before we even begin building the product. And this project was no exception. We wrote the press release and then said, okay, now <laughs> you think we can figure out how to do it? <laughs> and and um, do you think that ultimately this technology will become widespread? I mean, with, with that advice, will others go out and create this? Well, I don't, I don't really, I can, I can start, you can add, like, it's, it's hard to have, it's no crystal ball uh, to sort of predict the future. But I think the, the, the way, as Jana said, you know, we, it's, it's spectacular to be able to invent on behalf of customers, to be able to solve a customer problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, if, if you do that often enough and if you do it well, that's, what's, that's what we sort of draw our energy from and how big it gets or how popular it gets, customers get to decide that. So whether it becomes ubiquitous or not, I mean, customers are the ones who are going to eventually decide. So, so for the purposes that? of this interview, I'll decide that it becomes massive. Everyone is using this technology. <laughs> okay. um, what happens to cashier jobs? Well, I think uh, you've been to the store, Jeffrey, and 
the way we looked at it was slightly different. We just said, okay, we have this idea that we think checkout isn't the best part of a physical shopping experience, but there are Physical shopping is actually fantastic. I get to look at things and decide and talk to associates and get advice. So we just said, let's take the people and put them on tasks that we think add more value. And you've seen in the store, there's a kitchen full of cooks and there's a store full of associates that, as I mentioned, keeping the shelves stocked, helping the customers who do want help. So we just decided there were things where our human team could add a lot more value. So one thing that actually did strike me about the store was that you don't have to be a Prime member to benefit from the store. So, so typically, as, as everyone knows, Amazon adds tons of benefits to Prime, and um, as a result, people join the program and then end up spending more on Amazon. So are you considering anything that would tie Prime into the store and make it part of the Amazon flywheel? You know, we're definitely always looking for ways as a company to add more value to our Prime members. That, that's certainly no secret, you're right there. Right now, um, we don't have any plans. It is a question we've asked ourselves, okay. but right now, um, there are no immediate plans for that. Yeah, and actually, so, so Dilip, um, you also oversee Amazon Books, right? Oh. And so, so that is a store where if you are a Prime member, you get the online pricing, and yep. if you're not, you get the regular pricing. Mm -hmm. I guess, how do you see your role um, overseeing technology for both store concepts, and, and how much uh, synergies can there be you know, from one to the other? Yeah, so I think you know, when, when people think about just walkout technology, it takes a lot more than just, just walk out to be able to create a store. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that happens. Most of it is very relevant from .com, uh, from Amazon is you know we have you have to have ordering and you have to have pricing and you have to have merchandising you have to have a catalog you have to be able to get products to and from the store so there's a lot of similarities that cuts across independent of the just walkout mm -hmm. parts of it the just walkout things are unique to Amazon Go but when you look at you know when you look at our our bookstores and you look at our the Amazon Go stores they do share some elements of commonality uh, which is even similar to you know. The, the, the online business. I mean, you need, you need a way to have back-end software and infrastructure to be able to, to order items and deliver items and to get items to the store mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and handle returns, all those kinds of things. So those are the things that are common. And can, can you give an example of um, technology problem, software problem that you still are trying to solve? Yeah, that's a good question. For, so for Amazon Go, one of the interesting things, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. Um, if you take, you know, if you show a child a can of Coke, it's, you have to show it to them maybe once or twice, and it's very easy for them to be able to recognize it uh, and to be able to identify that. Not so much for computers. It takes a lot of information to be able to train them to be able to recognize differences or recognize items in general. They, they don't have that inbuilt knowledge which you know, humans have had for centuries, and it's a very honed skill. So there's a lot of research that happens in deep learning to try to figure out as to how is it that you can teach computers to be able to recognize items or to recognize activities with very little information as possible. Can you show it an item just once and be able to figure out what it is, or do you need multiple instances of it? So that's one example mm -hmm. of a problem. It's not completely solved. A lot of people are solving it. We're definitely pushing the state of the art and trying to figure out as to how to do it. And, and can you give the audience a sense of how many people Amazon is throwing at this problem? Uh, in terms of the people who are working on machine learning, in general at Amazon, there's thousands. Because machine learning is one of those things that, you know, we don't have a centralized team for machine learning. Uh, the way that Amazon organizes, it's largely decentralized with every area, there's some form of machine learning infusing itself. You know, the Alexa team has their sets of things as it applies to voice. You know, we have things as it applies to you know, computer vision. The fulfillment centers do their own things with computer vision and other technologies. So machine learning as a discipline tends to permeate pretty much everything that you see and do at Amazon. Um, and so that's, that's the way. So I would say thousands. Thousands of people are working on it. <laughs> so, so 
I know this is tough for Amazon to talk about future plans, but can you, can you please give me, and, and really the audience, a teaser of what's <laughs> to come for Amazon yeah, Go. You know, you're going to expand this to more locations? You're going to add it to Whole Foods stores? You know, for, we have one store, and it only opened uh, what was January 22nd. So right now, I'll just have to ask you to stay tuned. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can say for sure there, there are no plans to roll this out to Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. I think Whole Foods is fantastic at what they do, and we want them to keep doing what they do. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the work that we do with them is focused on making natural and organic food available to more people. Mm -hmm. But there's no plans for Just Walk Out technology at Whole Foods. And, and so, so if you could elaborate, John, on more on what, what you are focusing on daily, if, if, yeah. if not for expansion. <laughs> you know, as I mentioned before, the, the parts of this that um, are perhaps well understood by many retailers are, are the newest to me. Oh. So the things that have been really new and that I focus most of my days on are um, you know, food production. Mm -hmm. That was new. And the, the production of the, the meal kits that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, a team of associates at the store, and what is the right way to train them and prepare them in this new kind of a shopping experience. Even little things like understanding which customers want help and which like the store because they don't necessarily want help every day. Um, so the, the, I would say the more traditional aspects mm -hmm. um, of retail are the ones that I spend the most time on during the day. And, and just because we're, we're talking about associates, can you yeah. give any hint as to we have a dozen people working in the store, two dozen, five? Come visit, Jeffrey. You saw the <laughs> store. There, uh, there's a lot of cooks in that kitchen, and you saw a lot of orange shirts. As I mentioned earlier, they, they are super busy um, mm -hmm. stocking the shelves. And I, I also mentioned we always have one or two at entry to make sure that Everybody's a new customer right now because we just opened. So just making sure customers understand this new experience and feel super comfortable with it and have people there to answer any questions they have. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there also are people working outside the store because sometimes there is a lot of demand to get in and there's a, there's a line to get in the store. I know. I, know. It's a little, I, I get the irony. You know, at <laughs> launch we did because we wanted to make sure that um, customers were well prepared. They had downloaded the app. They understood what was going on. Um, that has subsided a bit. Uh, the line outside the store was simply due to fire code. We, we yeah. had to make sure that we were keeping safe and, and throttling the store based on fire code. Mm -hmm. Um, but luckily, because it moves so quickly, that line never really lasted that long, even when uh -huh. um, it was right at opening and, and sort of the most excitement. So I'm, I'm going to try one more time. So if, if, if fire code is the problem, then why not just put this in a bigger store like uh, Whole Foods? Well, <laughs> well, we had built this one that's 1,800 okay. square feet, so we, right. we wanted to use it. Um, you know, and to be honest, we're, we're still learning. We didn't know how quickly people would move through yeah. it. We didn't know how frequently they'd come or how popular it would be. Um, and as many people in this room know, construction and retail is a long lead time. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I mean, it's very much day one, and who knows yeah. um, what will happen as we keep learning. But we've been pretty psyched with how much customers seem to enjoy it. So uh, last question, since we're short on time. Um, what are the metrics, metrics for success? How do you know that you have delivered on your, your mission for Amazon Go? You know, I think it's probably like a lot of folks in this room. <laughs> do customers like what we're offering? Do they like the price we're offering, at it, uh, offering it at? And that's just based on what's selling, like pretty old school uh, kind of stuff. And I think, you know, when we first thought about this, at Amazon we've always talked about price selection and convenience. Mm -hmm. And just walk out technology and being able to walk in and kind of take it as if it were my own pantry was definitely a convenience play. But we also knew from the get-go, and Dilip and I talked a lot about this, that that would not matter if customers didn't like the food and the assortment and our pricing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's our primary focus is making sure that we're really understanding what do customers like, listening to their feedback, oh. um, and continually iterating and adapting to make sure it's serving their needs and that they come back often. So, so revenue, sales volume, not necessarily? Sales, frequency, um, all the things I'm sure lots of you know, traditional retailers look at as well. 
it's all about, but at the end of the day, it's about does the customer like what we have and do they think we're charging a fair price? I mean, that's what it comes down and to. by frequency, you mean how often customers come back? How often they shop the store, awesome. correct. And then on the technology side, any metrics for so the, so for the technology part, it's, as I said, you know, there's a lot of very thorny problems that have yet to be solved, mm -hmm. both from the hardware side as well, because we are always pushing the boundaries of what even current generation hardware can do. We're always pushing the boundaries of what any computer vision algorithm can do. So that, that is going to keep continuing. And as any, any, any software person worth this salt would say, I mean, you, you, have to, you have to constantly be building a store and testing and making sure that it is resilient, right? So you, you, have, to be, you have to be looking around corners mm -hmm. to see whether things are working, how do you adapt to it. Or at the same time, I think one of the tenets that we had had when we designed the store is we wanted to make sure that any expansion, any things that we would do, if we change the selection, if we do other kinds of stuff, we still wanted to make sure that our shopping experience is very seamless. Like that is not something that we wanted to, to sacrifice on or go back on. So keeping that in mind and building with that in mind is always very key, even within the store. Fantastic, well everyone, uh, thanks to John and Dilip for being here. Thank you so much yeah. for having Thank us. You.